Hey everyone, this is Riedel Hacker, AJ Raven. I'm here with my recap and review of X-Men Red, issue number 13. And yeah, this is the front cover. And I really like this issue. It was more of a setup issue. And Al Ewing is basically putting everyone in certain places for the upcoming showdown between Storm and her team and Genesis and her and the team that she ends up making over in Araco, which we'll get to in a bit. I, I really enjoyed this issue. So, we open up with introduction of a new Omega character whom Sunspot mentioned in the previous issue. His name is Lycon. I think that's how you pronounce it, Lycon. He's basically like an Omega-level Wolverine, which means that his healing ability, because Wolverine's natural healing ability uh, is his mutation. The adamantium claws were added onto him later. So you can see that Lycon also has those bone spikes. So he is Omega. And he's basically taking up the seat of uh, balance, in a way. The seat of uh, stalemate. And he has two heads, two brains, and he is an Omega-level healer. And he isn't as feral as, as Wolverine, which, I mean, an Omega-level feral Wolverine? Like, no. <laughs> but anyway, he makes, his, uh, he makes his debut over at the Great Ring of Arako, and of course... Uh, Logos Lotus ends up testing him and he actually throws a knife at uh, Lycon and Lycon doesn't dodge it the knife actually hits him right in the eye right here and everyone is like uh you you could have like tried to dodge it right you could have and Lycon is like I don't I don't need to be dodging such things because I can heal and also Aurora is like hey enough Lycon you're not the first newcomer Lotus has tested now if you remember Lotus also tested Aurora, and Aurora was able to actually stop the dagger from hitting hitting her by basically like uh, clapping it, basic yeah, clapping it right, clapping it uh, in between her hands, which was like awesome. So he's like, "I am the seat of sentimentality. Where is the decorum? Where is the etiquette? You should, you should, you guys should show me more respect." And I'm like, "No one has time for this. We have pressing matters to uh, to go over, especially with Iron Fire back." And yeah. We have uh, go back, right? Go back. The untouched or the or never touched is uh, on is in a seat. Now this seat that go back is in this this seat actually belongs to Genesis. So with Genesis popping up in this issue, go back knows that oh she's gonna be take she's gonna be gunning for her seat and go back isn't going to go down without a fight. So basically we have this little. Uh, scene where uh, Iron Fire goes over what happened and how he was given the sword, the blade, ivory blade, the blade of purity, and that uh, he was told that this this blade should never fall in the hands of Genesis because if it does, then it's game over. And while these people are talking, this is where they're they're like, wait, wait, who's that coming up to them? And yeah. It's Genesis, because Genesis arrived uh, over on Arako in the previous issue, and she's already here, which I really liked. She's like, hey, I'm here. And I really liked this panel where Storm was like, already? And I was like, yeah, Storm, Storm, Storm would have been like, this bitch is here already. <laughs> so yeah, she's here, she's back, she's here to reclaim her throne, and she's here to basically call everyone out, the members of the Grey Circle, about how they have grown weak, and yada, yada, yada. We get this new history page, the new history of Arago page, and this is what, yeah, Gobek. Gobek never held. He's like, yep, she's going to be gum gunning for my seat. Lycon is like, he actually wants to be with Genesis. Aurora, now this is what I really liked. Aurora actually, because of Aurora's ability about, when it comes to how she is actually attuned, to the world uh, and, and sky, she can feel the contrasting interplay of energies around Genesis and also around the staff she carries. So yeah, she she can she senses energy. Of course, we know that Storm can sense energies, but we don't necessarily get to see a lot of that in comic books. So I was actually, I really like reading, reading this bit about her that, yeah, she can sense that something is off. Now, now, if you're really get into, getting into it, Storm should have actually sensed Genesis arriving in Araco the moment that Genesis arrived with her with her staff of annihilation, especially with all of the sinister energy the staff gives off. Storm should have been able to clock her just like that. But hey, hey, you have to tell a story, I guess. And I also like this line where Lakuta is like, well, the stars were in their places. This would not affect them. <laughs> Lakuta is like, I don't give a fuck. 
but yeah, you can actually see that if you read this, you can actually kind of tell uh, when, when it comes to which which member is going to rebel against Genesis and who's going to side with her. Now with Genesis back, Genesis is like, this is what I come back to, a whole lot of debts and yada, yada, yada. And yeah, basically with how she walks around with the staff, the staff has the power of suggestion. It whispers to other people. And this is where the staff whispers, Arako has fallen. So that's basically eating up at people. Now, a good thing is that Storm realizes that. Storm is like, yep, if it spoke, she must not she must not listen because she knows that there's something wrong here. So basically, we have panels upon panels of how Annihilation is basically trying to read all of the members of the Great Ring about how everyone has grown weak. And the staff of Annihilation is also whispering to them. She, The staff is like, shame. And yeah, so Bonor feels shame. And... They are. They are falling under the staff's control. And I'm like, ooh, Storm better do something. Because as far as Genesis is concerned, the Storm's, uh, Storm allowing everyone to help each other and asking for aid, that's not the way. That, that's not how Araki are supposed to function. And Genesis is back to bring the people back to their old ways. Of course, this is where Storm is like, enough, enough. I won't allow you to keep on talking to my people like this. Uh, we can be better. We shouldn't always be uh, fighting everyone and yada, yada, yada. It's like, it's not, It's the same trope of the power, uh, the power of friendship and everything. And I'm like, I get it. I get what Al is trying to do. But I would actually like to see Storm show everyone that, hey, she asks for help because that's her decision. But but she doesn't necessarily need help to face problems. There's a difference. There's a difference between asking for help because you can't really do something on your own. And there's a difference between asking for help because that's what you want other people to learn. The importance of teamwork. However, even if you don't get help, you should, you should be strong enough to handle the situation on your own. I think that Al even needs to do, do that. In order to showcase to everyone. The Storm is capable of a lot more. And the fact that she's all about teamwork. Is just just, just that it's something that she wants the Araki to, to be more welcoming of. Because again, even Genesis calls her out because Kobuk is like, "Hey, Aurora was very, very helpful, very instrumental when it came to def uh, when it came to defeating uh, Uranus." And Genesis is like, "But yeah, not killing him. But see, uh, if she was to be truly respected, she should have finished him alone. Instead, as I hear it, she leaned on humans and dying old men. Like, duh." I can, I can understand where Genesis is coming from. Genesis is like, oh, Aurora, if you're all that, then you should have fought uh, Uranus on your own, right? And Storm is like, enough. And this is where the staff actually kind of impacts Aurora. Staff, the staff whispers miss. And Storm's lightning actually misses Genesis. So I'm like, ooh, this is going to be a power. Of, this is going to be a battle of willpower. And we know that Storm has one of the strongest wills out there. So this is going to be very, very, very interesting. Now, as far as Genesis herself is concerned, it looks like she has power over nature and earth and greenery. She's basically like the plant fairy in a way. So it'd be very interesting to see how she ends up fighting Storm because Storm can take to the skies. She can basically attack Genesis even if she's not in front of her, right? So it would be very interesting to see how Storm ends up fighting Genesis from a distance or fighting Genesis without the staff because I'm like, Genesis, if I take the staff away from you, what the heck are you going to do, plant lady? What the heck? And also, I want to see the range that the staff has. Can the staff impact people that aren't in front of Genesis? I want to know. So basically, everyone is ready to fight. And John Kobik is like, let's fight Genesis. And Iron Man is like, no, I call dibs. I want to fight her first. So he charges in, in at uh, Genesis with his sword. And yeah, it's bad. And Genesis ends up taking the sword. And I'm like, oh, oh, Iron Fire, you had one job. You had one job. Now, Storm tries to intervene and stop the fighting. But this is where the staff ends up uh, controlling in a way. It, basically impacting, right? Suggesting to Sobunar that... He should he should stop Storm and Sobunar does that. So Sobunar hits uh, Storm with his water, and this is where S Storm is like, "You truly you truly want rule by the strong, Sobunar. You want a world without mercy or pity? Then I will show you that world. It will be my gift to you, and we shall see what happens when the ocean in your blood becomes a tempest." And like this is the type of Storm when I want to see, because I want other people to realize that Storm can kill you if she wants. She can defeat you easily. The fact that she isn't. And she is allowing you to live, like, be grateful. 
The chapter basically ends with Lotus telling Lakuta that, hey, you you need to stop this, right? You know that this is wrong. And Lakuta's like, well, I kind of know that. But then again, this doesn't really affect the stars, right? And Lotus is like, but it does. And I liked how Lotus actually read Genesis. He's like, and she has lost that, right? She wore the helm. She failed Ar Arako. Now she wants, wants to own us. And I call that a challenge to all. He's like, well, when it comes down to it, Genesis lost. Genesis lost to Annihilation. So what right does she has to come back and uh, and and ask us to bow down to her? She doesn't have the right to rule Arago. Uh, in a way, none of uh, no one does. So he's like, you need to help. You need to help Lakuta. So Lakuta is like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. So she ends up teleporting uh, Lotus, Storm, uh, Iron Fire, and go back away from the Great Ring. So that's going to be the resistance. Because even Lakuta is like, if I... Can you guys read this? Yeah, even Lakuta is like, Rebel Rebels of Arako survives. So that's the rebellion. We have Lotus, Storm, Iron Fire. Oh, we also have Xylo and we have Kobuk. So that's the rebellion. While Lakuta, Sobunar, uh, Lyakon, uh, Ar Solaris I kind of forgot her name. And they're going to be with Genesis. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing... I'm not really sure if we'll get a fight between Storm and Sabunar. However, I would like to see that. Uh, but hey, if we skip that and we go directly to Genesis and Storm, I I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But yeah, the the issue ends with the rebels being teleported away and Genesis ha holding the Sword of Purity and she is ready to start her reign of terror. And I like this panel at the end where uh, everyone is like, Lakuta, why did you do that? You basically challenge Genesis, right? And Lakuta is like, well, you can see it that way if you, Genesis, wanted me to challenge you. And Genesis is like, nah. I mean, how the heck is she going to fight Lakuta? She can just teleport her away. <laughs> But yeah, as far as Genesis is concerned, uh, Storm and her rebels uh, rebels ran away. So yeah, of course they're gonna they're gonna come up with a plan, and I'm looking forward to reading issue number fourteen because I want I want to see Storm versus Genesis. It has to happen. Weather witch fighting a plant lady. Let's see what happens. So yeah, this was X Men Red issue number thirteen. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comment section below. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later.